Recently I've been using a lot of the older rangefinder and viewfinder cameras which have no built-in light meters or anything like that. I've been using Sony 16's calculations and also an app that I've got on my smartphone. Looking at some of the results I'm not convinced that the smartphone app is totally accurate. So I decided to have a look for a handheld light meter. I've got one somewhere in my kit already but it's one that takes mercury batteries and wine cell batteries which came out as a replacement don't last very long. So I put that on the back burner and um, I looked on eBay for a new handheld meter. And I was ambitious, so I looked at Siconic ones and got quite enthusiastic because the uh, auctions were starting at 99 pence, five pounds. Of course, by the time the auction was finishing, they were up to hundreds of pounds. So I'm not going to pay that much for a handheld light meter. And um, I saw one on there that I've owned before and it's the Leningrad 4 um, light meter from Russia and it's a selenium cell meter which doesn't take batteries. Now I know that uh, selenium cells can um, deplete or stop working. Hello socks. But I saw this one and I eventually won it for two pounds plus post and packaging, Leningrad 4. And um, it was described as working. So I thought it was worth a punt, two pounds plus postage and packaging and I won it for just over five pounds and it even still has the um, cover for doing incident metering and uh, it arrived and I decided to try it out and just to keep on a the theme decided to give the Zenith TTL another go and probably because I had a handheld meter I found out the battery had run out in this the Zenith so um, I uh, thought perfect we'll use the handheld meter we shoot former pan 100 in a Zenith TTL and off we went to Newcastle to shoot the film We'll have a look at the photos and then we'll come back, we'll look at the camera, we'll look at the light meter and um, go from there.
This is the Leningrad 4 light meter. It measures reflected light and it also measures incident light. For reflected light it's quite simple. You point the meter at the subject and if there's light there you see the needle moves and the scale is for exposure values. So you set your ISO by turning the middle section so that it reads off the ISO of the film or ASA which is the same number. Turn this until you get the exposure value that's at the bottom of the exposure value in this bit here. So say for example it was reading at exposure value 11. Turn to 11 there. And then you can read off your shutter speeds and apertures on this bit here. So say for example you want to use F8 with exposure value 11, well, it's a five hundredth of a second and um, if you're using F22 it's a sixtieth of a second. For incident readings you clip this white bit on the front Move to your subject, point the light meter at your camera, take a reading and uh, calculate it the same way as I've just shown you. It's very easy to use light meter and I'm thankful that it's working after all these years. And as you've seen from the photos it's working quite accurately. The Zenit TTL camera, this one's a 1980 model, the lens is also a 1980 model so it suggests that these were in the same box when it was, event when it was originally sold. comes with the Helios 44M lens which is a 58mm f2 lens based on the old Zeiss Biotar. The apertures go from f2 to f16. The lens focuses down to just under half a meter or around about half a meter. This one is marked up in meters rather than feet so possibly not originally produced for the UK market. On the top of the camera we have the meter sensitivity um, setting and it's in Ghost ASA. The fastest um, film we can set for is 500 and it goes down to 16 I think. The shutter speeds you've got your B or bulb setting then a thirtieth of a second up to a five hundredth of a second. The shutter release button is there. It's um, Quite rough feeling and you've got your frame counter here which you set manually at the start of every film. On the back is your um, battery compartment. At the moment it doesn't have a battery in.
inside the camera normal weight of loaded cassette there pull the lead across fits in the slot there and as you take up the slack ensure that the holes in the edge of the film are taken up by a sprocket there and then close the back of the camera set your film frame counter to zero and off you go I have to say that I really enjoyed using the Zenit this time round and the shots were taken in Newcastle um, there's a mixture of architecture, urban, even a bit of street photography which is rare for me I uh, wouldn't say I'm a street photographer um, I'm a bit shy about pointing a camera in people's faces and shooting them um, one of my rules about the possibility of doing street photography is that if you're going to be shooting people in the street it's best to have a small camera and preferably smooth camera with no sharp edges because if you're shooting people's faces, shoving the camera in the faces, especially in a place like Blythe sooner or later somebody's going to take that camera off you and shove it in a place where you'll appreciate smallness and smoothness. However, I took some shots in Newcastle and all I did was I had my camera hanging on my strap, set it up for zone focusing, wound it on and just watched the scene when it thought it looked right, I shot it. Um, because there was only two points of contact, um, some of the photos taken on 125th of a second was a slight camera shake. Normally when you're shooting and looking through the viewfinder, there's three points of contact so it helps keep the thing steady. So one thing I've learned is if I'm going to be shooting from the hip as it were, Next time I'll use 250th or even 500th of a second. So that's it. I'm really happy with the photos. And um, special mention to the four ladies uh, dressed up and in, uh, inspired by Japanese uh, fashion from a few years ago. They look great. And after I plucked up courage and went up to them and asked if I could take their photo, they were happy and posed. I only took the one shot because I wasn't feeling that comfortable but thank you ladies if you ever see this video I really appreciate it and I do think you looked great. Thanks again. So that's the end of this one. Um, I think my next video I'm gonna look at how I go about buying second-hand cameras. That's the next video. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.